So here we are in the latest iteration of the new prototype mega cockpit ish. So we're flying the Twin Otter again today. I haven't flown the Twin Otter for quite a while just because of its inadequacies. I've um, messed about with some of that. I've edited one of the config files to kind of reduce that spoiler on approach effect that's supposed to it imitate the or simulate the prop drag that's lacking in the, the Twin Otter flight model. That makes the approach somewhat tolerable. We are due a new update for the sound soon. That's not been dropped yet, even into beta. So we've still got the very mundane, uh, messy sound that we've ended up with to date. And we're just flying around northern Canada in the vicinity of Iqaluit. We set a direct to and we fly there. On the autopilot, got my custom Twin Otter autopilot on here. The only thing you'll notice if you look at this closely is that vertical speed mode is indicated with IAS. I've swapped the function of that, I haven't changed the legend on that. But if we go into vertical speed mode, we flip from out to what looks like IAS. And then my up-down buttons have been repurposed to these two over here. <laughs> so there you go, we're flying on Air Manager. We've got a custom panel here, which is a work in progress using the Aspen, Aspen Avionics. Slightly more modern displays over here, that's working fairly well. So we've got the three screen display rescued now in Flight Sim 2020, working really well to date. It's still kind of jerry-rigged in, in a sense, but we've got the angles a little bit more useful. We've got the screens a little bit further out, so we do have discontinuity here, but it's not a great issue. It's more than compensated for by the fact that we pick up the side views. And of course the virtual cockpit is zoomed in, so we have more of a life-size display. If we look at the gauges, the gauges are pretty much the same size as the gauges on the panel, air manager panel. So we're leaving it like this with the track IR off. Because it's a virtual cockpit, we can finesse the display up and down, backwards and forwards, if we want to do that. We do have this door pillar in the way, but that's inconsequential for now. So hopefully this is going to take us to Ikawa. We're at 7,500 feet. That's probably about 6,000 feet AGL. Eight miles to run. So if we're going to head down. I'm going to pull the power back a fair bit and we'll look at that vertical speed mode. So if I flip from alt to vertical speed and then we're going to go dial that down. We've got that on my display here, 500 feet per minute. We'll go down a bit faster than that. We'll go down 1000 feet per minute. Remembering this autopilot, which is the KAP140, doesn't actually have an IAS hold, so we have to watch the speed. And if we level out at 2000, let's say. Now I press the arm button there. I don't. I can't remember if I've done anything with the arm button, but don't forget this auto arms. As soon as I change the pre-selected altitude. That is armed, so we should get the air, um, altitude alerts, and then it should level off at 2,000 feet. We're kind of midday, but the day's only about three hours long, <laughs> so so we're kind of late morning, early evening, almost simultaneously. So we're leaving the track IR turned off. We can use that if, if we want, but uh, at the moment. The display spans almost uh, 180 degrees left to right. In fact, it is 180 degrees if we look at the numbers. We don't seem to be descending, I'm not sure. I think that's because I forgot to change the altitude before I went into the downward 
climb. We'll do that again. There's something wrong with my heading bug. My heading bug is winding its way around by itself. I suspect I've got something else. That's either a glitchy control on the panel or it's also mapped to something else by mistake. I don't think it's a glitchy control. I've had these problems before and not found any faults with the electronics. You may recall this airport if you watched one of my way back to an otter. Which one was it? Twin Otter close up videos, the one about fuel. I was flying from Goose Bay to Iqaluit, notionally to prepare for a transatlantic flight, which I never actually did. Um, and the Iqaluit, in, that was in prepared, of course, and the Iqaluit rendition in prepared was very poor. We've got much better approximation of the airport in Flight Sim 2020. I think we might level out here actually. We're about 25, we're about 2000 AGL. I've got the radio altimeter is on scale. Okay, great flying right into the sun towards the airport. You can see some flashing here, so that's probably the strip. Uh, we've got a bit of a tailwind from this direction, so we'll go. What's the runway doing? So we've got three, four, one, six. So if we kind of join overhead and then do a left downwind that way. We should be good. That's the altitude alert. If we don't get proper altitude alert lights, this autopilot doesn't do that properly in the Twin Otter. And I'm bothered to fix that. So there's the strip out the left hand side. I don't know if you can see that on camera, right out here. I'm going to turn onto the downwind now. We do need to be descending, so I'm pulling the power as well. We're quite close into the strip actually. So we're watching for that spoiler effect that Aerosoft has built into this. I can't remember if it's based on the air, indicated airspeed or if it's built or based on the torque setting. But either way I've dialed it back so it shouldn't be as precipitous. In terms of um, speed drop off. That cloud ahead looks that looks pretty good. Kinda looks like precipitation, which it probably isn't. Let's go out a little bit further on the downwind. I'm finding it hard to trim for a low speed. We're doing, I don't know, 90, 90 knots. Well, I've got almost full up elevator trim on. Well, we've got a bit of a white out there. I turn on to base. Some flaps out. Pretty high here, we should really go around, but I'm not going to do that. 
and we're very high. We're going to go to full flap straight away. Indicating 70. GPS is telling us we're going to have a tailwind now, which is not great. If this is going to be a tailwind on touchdown, we might go around and do a kind of a teardrop and it's coming from the other side, the other end. Since we're way too high here, we've got plenty of runway, we'll make it if we land long. But we don't want to be landing with the tailwind, really. Now it's shifting around to show it's we've got a bit of a crosswind. Yeah, maybe quartering from the tail. If I just abandon that and we go around and land from the other direction, that should give us more of a A reasonable wind condition. Not doing any of this by the book, <laughs> obviously. I don't know how to do it by the book, if I'm honest. I think we're doing a very unorthodox, just maybe 200 degree turn. Maybe go to full flaps as we do that. GPS is still lying to us about the. Actually, it's not lying to us. The orientation's north up. All right, 70 knots, way too high, full flaps. Big deal. Let's see if we can slide it in a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, that wasn't by the book, and it wasn't aesthetic, but we're down. 